Prince here, who's here. So um, today we're going to talk about a content calendar. Now there's lots of online content calendars there already. Um, Canva's even got a content calendar. And what that does is schedule your post. We're not really talking about that today because I don't use content calendars as scheduling or scheduling calendars for two reasons. One, if you prepare the post, there's lots of them, but um, there is um, HubSuite, um, Canva, you can do it. There's loads of different softwares you can schedule the post. And I'm not saying don't do it, but typically a lot of them won't let you, won't let you use things like GIFs, document posts. And that's where you get a lot of people using just a standard image post only because they use schedulers. So that's why I, I normally save it or email it to myself sometimes so I can do it, post it very, um, from my mobile, but also, um, or just prepare it in a Word document. But the, the, uh, the other reason I don't schedule um, some of the, the buffer, for example, a lot of the time actually shows up as a link. So it shows up as a linked post and, and LinkedIn basically knows you've not uploaded it. And, and LinkedIn want people to upload the post. They don't want you to schedule it. They want you to upload it so it's human content. So you will get penalized if it shows up as a link, but I've not tested them all. But that's not what we're here to talk about, it's scheduling content. I just want to clarify that. We're here to really, to, for you to create your own content calendar, which is going to make it easier to come up with ideas for posts because we've all been there, and me included, at 6.30 in the morning. Before you know it, you've liked and commented on some posts and you think you want to post about something and you scratch your head and come up with an idea in the last minute. Sometimes these are amazing, but other times it leads to you spending an hour liking and commenting. And in return, you've basically got a post with lots of engagement, but isn't going to do anything for you or your business. So it's a bit of a time waster. Whereas if you can plan your content ideas a little bit, it can generally help along with your LinkedIn strategy to help you generate leads, get recognized for the right thing, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to share my screen with you guys now. And um, I said it's quite a quick topic, so it should be within half an hour. Famous last words. So my lovely Canva. So creating a content calendar that's easy. And I think easy, everything I do, not, it's not because I'm lazy, but I think, you know, if something's easy, you're more likely to make it work. So everything I do, I try and make it easy for myself. So all these types of things that I do, so I don't spend forever and a day doing it. So before you even, there's, it's difficult to create a content kind of ideas calendar if you don't have a strategy. And that's, again, where so many people are just posting and they don't really have a strategy about what they want to get out of LinkedIn. So who are you targeting? What outcome do you want? What is the product or service that you are selling people? So for example, in the next, if we look at February as an example, I mean, what, what is the key target market you're targeting? What product do you want them to buy? And what do you want to talk about that's going to help link into them buying it? And again, having a link, and, a, and I mean an external link, so you can help enable sales quickly. So Calendly or... A, meet, a meeting link, something like that. Um, and using the hashtags of the sectors you want to target. If you don't have that nailed down, first of all, which we've done training on and you've got a little strategy document, you're going to struggle with ideas. You're constantly going to be coming up with random topics. And again, they, you might hit lucky, but quite often you spend probably a lot of wasted posts that don't. And again, you're wasting your own time. So key thing is make it simple. And by using monthly themes, it really helps. So let's say for the quarter, your goals are to, you know, get 10 clients from LinkedIn and you want to use LinkedIn to help you generate more conversations, more meetings. And the product that you're going to lead with is a, it's going to be a one hour strategy session. You're going to charge £99. But let's say that's your lead product. Obviously, um, when, you, when you actually get a customer, you want to talk to them about your other services, etc. But initially, you're going to lead with one product or one service, and you're going to really use that to drive home and promote what you're doing. The post really then, once you've got that idea, it's quite easy to create posts. Well, it's easier, like posts around why I work with you, what the key benefits of that product and service are, the key benefits of, of that service. 
it, you, by using the right hashtags, you can track and target the right people you're targeting, showcase work that you've done, showcase extra customers, showcase why you, and really by using the right links, help drive people to the next sales action. But again, having that monthly theme about picking one thing and kind of sticking to it, that's the thing that we most all of us generally don't do, we struggle with. And then that's again where the leads come all over the place. If you stick to one kind of key thing, that's going to really help you. And less is always more. So I know that we all do 10,000 products, me included, but let's pick one to lead with or a one or two. And, you know, I'm, I've used Canva as an example because I use and a lot of people use Canva. It doesn't need to be Canva. But if variation is key for LinkedIn or for any social media, so you attract different types of people and the right type of people. So varying styles and varying um, topics. But if you've already created a template, which again, I think I did last time, in a GIF, a document slide, a video skin, makes it so easy for you to just copy that template and then edit that for your post. So once you've got the post idea, it should then take you two or three minutes just to edit that GIF or document post to that style. And again, if you do something like visuals, it, it could be a unique picture. But if you are changing your different styles of posts, if you've got these three templates made, it can really make you, yourself quicker and you just copy and paste. And I'll just show you how you do that now. So in my Canva, so I've got all my designs, which you'll recognize, and you, you recognize all my posts. All I do like for this morning's, I just went, click there, three little dots, make a copy. And I will go up here and I will use this as a base. And I've probably got about 100 templates. But if you start with three, they'll all... And then once you get ones that you like and do well, you can just obviously edit that from here. And um, So again, I could then just now quickly change that colour, change the text font, and add a few more animated elements to change it. So I'm going to take rid of my face. And let's see, I put, I'm going to do calendar, which I did today. It took me the whole of two seconds to do a typed in calendar, went to these little arrows and loads of you be making great gifts, went to animated and Bob's your uncle. And there I have a very different gif, which is going to be part of my post, but the, the visual is the part that's going to help stand out but that's not really going to be the key story you still need to get that key story that's going to really help get the people attracted to the, to you and what you do so you've got the gif which is different you want you want to be able to create the post so going back to the presentation So you've got, you know, you've got your template set up that you can copy. Ultimately, you know, it comes down to ideas. You need, I mean, we all have ideas and I'm going to come back to the content calendar that's going to help them. But when you do get an idea coming into your head, write that down. I, I've got a notebook I write down. I write down all my ideas. Sometimes I email them to myself and I basically just put the headlines in LinkedIn posts because so it's on my phone. So if I'm ever stuck for an idea, I've got them. But ultimately writing them down, whether that's on your phone or on a bit of paper, anywhere, that's going to help just coming up with things because ideas can come from anywhere. And the key thing is drawing in from your personal experience because then it's your story. Rather than copying somebody else's story or somebody else's message, you want it to be your content about you. And I mean, I know a lot of people use gifts from Google, but I mean, again, that's what's that showcasing about you as a, it's not showcasing you. If you're creating your own gifts with your own ideas, your own stories, it's really helping people buy into you. And I think that's really important. And again, I've said it again, mix it up. But making it easy is absolutely key. So um, using a calendar to prompt you, which I'm going to come on to in a moment, steering away from being too corporate, because the whole purpose of LinkedIn is to start normal conversations. Um, by being too corporate, you know, people and using that kind of corporate language, you're not going to get people to buy into you. So if you ideally try and plan your weekly content or at least the night before 
which is what I normally do. When you wake up in the morning, if you've got the idea and a rough idea, it's probably going to take you five, 10 minutes to create a post rather than half an hour. But to actually create the calendar, I'm just going to, this is what I do. It's very simple. And I use Office 365. This could be any calendar. So I'm just going to go to my calendar. Let's keep moving these faces along. Oh, it's a bit slow. So let me just go back to my calendar. So this is this is really a way you're going to create a calendar. You could do this in paper. You could do it on your laptop. But here you've got the option on 365. You've got the option. I've got different calendars. And I've also got a LinkedIn content calendar. Now, if you want to do that, it takes literally one minute. All you need to do is add calendar. Add personal calendar. No, you don't, sorry. Back to that. Add calendar. Oh, that's the first Anyway, I'll come back to that later because I, I did it. I did it ten minutes ago. But anyway, I've added a calendar, and I'll show you how to do that. Sorry, I think it was create blank Sorry. calendar. Where was that? Right. So here we go. Yeah. Yes. yes. Perfect. Thank you, Ethel. So you create a blank You're calendar welcome. sometimes, and then ultimately you're just going to give it a, a, a name. I'm not going to call it. You can give it a nice color, and that is it. If you save it. There you've got your LinkedIn calendar. And now this, this is the key thing. So again, you've got your strategy for the month. The key thing is then, rather than you thinking um, every day of a new thing, if you think, right, there's five key components to getting people to buy into you, what would they be? And for me, for example, so I've got different topics set up. So here I've got every Tuesday, I'm going to do a post about training or upcoming an event. So on the night before, I'll think, right, what's the post going to be? And I will create a post, something to do with training or an upcoming event. And every single Tuesday, I do a post on that and there will be a link to book. And that might even be a link to previous training. But again, I'm sticking to one theme every week. And that's going to help, you know, highlight me as a LinkedIn, you know, person, etc. Every Wednesday, I do a post about LBC winners. And again, all I do on Tuesday night is think, right, okay, who, who am I going to talk about today? And I'll highlight a few people. It takes, it takes really easy. And then again, I'll go to a GIF, a document post. And again, I'll link into the fact that's with a sign up to LinkedIn Breakfast Club to help generate more leads for LinkedIn Breakfast Club. And then every Thursday, highlight why me. So talk about stories from the past. It's going to showcase some successes. So again, I might tie into a story about being school, being competitive. I might talk about um, anything to do with anything from school, from college to previous jobs, even from you know last year, last month, that can really help people buy into me. And on, for example, Monday, or even, and some other ideas might be on Monday, I might do a story about being a mom, being a working mom. Again, I think a lot of people can relate to. But again, I'll link it into some of the top things that I'm doing work. So again, it's showcasing me as a person because people buy into people, but also, you know, it might highlight some specific areas. Another day you could do customer testimonials. You could do a day in the life of. So it could be something that's happened to you that week. You could do another topic could be customer conversations. And again, we all think we don't have these stories inside us, but they're there. And if you think about any conversation you've had with a person, and especially now, I don't know about you, but I do more Zoom customer conversations than I've ever done for years. I mean, I've had, I think today and yesterday, I've had about 10 Zoom calls already. And if I even thought just about one of those calls, I could probably pull out a conversation. So again, and this is linking into what you're doing in business. So again, it's a personal story about you, it's about a customer. And I think it is about coming up with that calendar. So if, um, if you're a dad, again, you could be a working dad, a working mom. But there's so many stories that can highlight, you know, you as a person, but also how you're 
you know, managing being successful as a business woman, businessman that can make people want to buy from you or, or at least have that conversation. So it is coming up with topics. And again, you could also do if you wanted to do about your product or service one day a week, you could say, right, um, I'm going to do pick one benefit and talk about that. So every week it's going to be value, time, you know, and every single week you talk about one benefit. The great thing about LinkedIn is if you've got 10 benefits, Roll that out over 10 weeks and then you can just repurpose them all over again. Just change a few words, change a few. Because realistically, people aren't going to remember that post from 10 weeks ago. And I can roll out and, and repurpose. When I say repurpose, change the GIF a little bit. Or if you did it as a GIF post, do it as a text-only post. Change some of the words. Works amazingly. So 10 benefits about, um, you know, one of your products. You could pick 10 reasons why people want to work with you. And, you know, it's really just then, so once you've got this in the calendar, it's a case of creating a new event, and anybody who uses 365. And then I would do, let's just say it's Mum's Life post, and I'm just going to put a reminder for that every week. And you could even go further along, say Mum's Life is going to be a GIF, a funny GIF. Every week you're going to do something about that. That is that that's going to be in your calendar and you can set it for a reminder so the night before so you remember so you've got no excuse and then if i go to february that was for today actually if i go to february i've got all these posts already lined up and if you do that every month and maybe review it you can always edit it and look at what the result is that channeling the results you want rather than just posting nice stuff or what you think people want to see if you think about who your target audience is before you do your content calendar and aim it around, you know, highlighting who you are, showcasing who your customers are. Because again, if you're telling people, I, I spoke, if you're telling, talking, selling to solicitors and you're doing posts about, you know, working with your solicitors posts, it's going to help them kind of get into that mindset of working with you again. So painting that picture of working with your ideal clients and then using hashtags of those ideal clients, like hashtag solicitors. So again, I mean, this is something really, really simple. It's not complicated. And it is just, I mean, there's no magic wand to creating content quickly, but at least if you've got this, every week you can think, Friday, I'm going to do a fun post from the 80s. But again, link it into, you know, music. And, and Friday, quite often, I'll do music. Like, it could be a lyric from a song. And honestly, if I'm able to start, I'll just think of a band and Google, give me give me the top five favourite songs from The Killers. I'll pick a lyric, a, a line from that. And so it doesn't need to be, I can, but I can still relate that back into work. And I think that's the key thing, linking it in some way into what you do or who you are or why you're successful or why people should work with you. But coming up with these topics to some degree is, is pulling in your passions. If you like sport, you know, Friday could be a great day to talk about sport, your favorite team, you know, look, whatever you're passionate about, try and include that in there, but do link it into work to some degree. And that's pretty much it. And that's going to show up. I can just tick this. So that's going to show up in my normal calendar. And I don't know about you guys, but I live by my calendar. If something's not in my calendar, it's not going to happen. And that's going to show up in my calendar constantly. So there's no escape from it. It's there. And again, if you're looking at that night before, it's going to trigger you, right, I'm going to do a story about my children or a story about, you know, 1970s, 1980s, famous authors, famous musicians, whatever your passion is. You know, but again, making sure that at least two times a week you're talking about what you do or what you're selling. I think that is absolutely crucial. It's got to have some post to the target audience about what you're doing at least twice a week because, you know, you're not going to get that message through because there's so many posts in the LinkedIn feed. If you're not kind of constantly reminding people what you do, they won't remember and even to people in the group, and we see your posts all the time, it takes a long time to really think, oh, you do this, this is what you do, this is why I should come to you. And that's why people don't buy from people straight away. You know, because over a period of time, you get brainwashed into thinking, I want to work with you. And by showcasing yourself in different ways, that's how you kind of attract the right people that you want to work with, not the ones you wish you'd never signed up. You more all the time. And to some degree, that is it. I mean, it's really, really simple. But by doing this, it'll kind of give you a guide. And if anybody wants me to help them with these topics, I mean, I'm more than happy to. But I know, I mean, Athel's in the group. She helps with content ideas. 
And I mean, I'm sure she'll be more than happy to have a conversation as well. So I've got, got <laughs> I'm just going to stop, try and, try and stop sharing my screen. Where am I? So I've got a little bonus before. Do any questions on that? I mean, does that sound, I mean, it's, it's just really simple. Anybody? Does that sound something that people would benefit or help people? Anybody? But I said, if you're struggling with the actual topics, let me know. And I said, or, or Athol's that help you. And I've got a little bonus. We've got four minutes to go. I've got a little bonus. Maureen, Maureen have you got any thoughts around... Sorry, have you got any thoughts around how often you should put a, an actual sales post in detailing a service? Well, to some degree, all my posts are sales posts because I'm a salesperson. I mean, I think every post is a sales yeah. post, really. That's my opinion. But with a link in it, I would say once a week. But, but most posts, I will go back and put a link in afterwards. I mean, I can't help myself, to be honest. But I'd say once a week, at least, put a link in. But I mean, ultimately, yeah. I am a salesperson. So I mean, but I, I try, I have to hold myself back not to do But I think you should put at least a link in once a week for sure, because it does make a difference on posts that you do and posts you don't, you will get more leads probably. Even though you get less views more than likely, it's worth Ma it. Maureen, are you talking about putting a link in the post itself or in the yes. comments below? I would put it in the the post itself. Um, just because, I mean, they, you will get penalised a little bit, but I don't. I don't think it makes that much difference, to be honest. I really don't. I mean, I, I've tried. I mean, like the, today, I put a link in my post, and I think I've got about two thousand views. Yeah, I maybe would have got three thousand if it didn't. But you know, I've still got a few new signups and from it. So I think at least once a week, just stick it in there. Or if if you don't want to come across too salesy, which is not everybody's personality. You don't need to, but maybe go back the next day or later on and put the link in then. Because again, if, and I'm talking about a calendar link or a link to your event, because, you know, there's so many different links. If it's a LinkedIn link, you know, it won't get penalized as much. So that could be a LinkedIn event. You could do a, create a free event for your services on LinkedIn. Use that link to promote it. Of course, at the end of that session, you're probably going to do a, here's why you should buy into me anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah, just, that's fine. Thanks. Right. I'm just so I would just try it at the end of the day. And it, because the views of a post so much depend on the context of the post. If it's too salesy anyway, LinkedIn will not give you loads of views. So in a way, that's why if you create a story, but put a link at the bottom anyway, you kind of balance this out. If it is, I do this as a product, let's say Carol, I do one to one weight management, come and buy from me. LinkedIn, that, that post will bomb anyway. But as Carol done this morning, forever seen Carol's post, it was a story. But yes, you got, you got the message that if you wanted one-to-one -one weight coaching, you would go to Carol. That, that post would have done a lot better, as it probably did. So I think you, you just got to use that, that benefit. But if you put a link at the bottom once a week, people will, at least if they're looking at your post, they might think, because some people will look at your post a week later. Um, so they might go in and click to book a meeting. I'm just going to share my screen again because I've got a bumper bonus, a bumper bonus, one we prepared earlier. So headlines are so important and I just wanted to throw this in to the meeting. So the right headline can dramatically, and again, I'm not a copywriter, but headlines are so important in a post because if you're stopping a LinkedIn feed, even scrolling, so you're not looking at the groups, is the headline which will st make and stop Headline or the image, they'll make you stop and look at the post. And if you ever stop for headlines, there's so many different tools out there. This is one, I wouldn't say I use it all the time, but I have used it. If you Google um, social media headliner, this is just one. It asks you a couple of questions. And at the end of it, so this has asked me some keywords, desired outcome, blah, blah, blah. But basically, it gives you some, it gives you some example headlines. Now, I'm not saying I would use these exactly. But I might take, if I'm ever stuck for a headline, and again, to me, if you've got a headline, it's easy then to create the post. I mean, I love this. I'll probably use this this week. So it just gives you some ideas with headlines. So the headline ideally should be, um, obviously the headline, but then you put a couple of line spaces under it. But there's loads of headline free generator tools. So you can have a bit of fun with them, but it gives you just some ideas and putting numbers in the headline, for example, is a great way to catch people's eye. I quite often do seven tips or three reasons, but, and it's, this is called the Hoth headline generator.
But if you ever stop for a headline, it takes two minutes and it will come up with some random ideas and you can even do get more ideas. And I'll give you loads, you know, you can do loads of things, but that's a great way to do a headline. And a headline will really help capture the right people or capture people to your post. And that is it pretty much today on the creating your own content calendar. I've used Office 365, but as I said, you can easily schedule in themes linking to your LinkedIn strategy, which are going to make sure that your content's on track to the right message. And I do know from experience that if your content is the, following the right message, the right thing, you will generate leads. It might take weeks, sometimes it takes months, but it depends on your sales cycle, but it is sticking to that consistency and you'll stick into it for at least a month. If you do one different theme a month around what you do, you know, that's really going to give you a good flavor and it certainly will help attract the right people as well because you're talking to the right people. So any questions? So we've got another couple of topics on the training courses and I can't even remember what's next week, I'll check. But if I'm thinking of doing this ongoing, so we might get some guest speakers in as well to do some topics. So if anybody's got any ideas or any suggestions that they would like, please um, send me a message and you know we can ask in some speakers, some copywriters, some content coaches or anything about LinkedIn and we can keep this Tuesday 2.30 going, just to keep adding knowledge and keep kind of working on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is changing all the time. So I think the more knowledge you can add and focus is really good for you. And I love doing these as well. It helps, keeps me focused. So any questions from anybody? Sarah and Will, you look like you're having a great time enjoying it. Any questions? Can't hear you, no. No, no sorry, I was, I was trying to unmute my mic. Then, cool. um, no, no, I think that's everything because you answered about the link one. That was my... Perfect. Anybody else? About, well, what about so, sorry, John. What about calling LinkedIn and finding and getting some um, best best practices from their gurus and LinkedIn himself in the UK? LinkedIn. But, but but honestly, they they typically. I mean, LinkedIn don't. I mean, I actually ch trained the for, well, the first sales director on LinkedIn. I trained them how I, I, I trained them how to sell many years ago. Honestly, they don't do it. I mean, on. Because LinkedIn, LinkedIn's focus is, I mean, they do loads of content, but they don't come and do speeches. I mean, they will get other people to do it. They don't do it, to yeah, be honest. There's it's, nothing around, aren't there? I mean, I think they just think they're, they're above that. They do they do publish quite a lot of good content themselves. So if you go and look for it, but they're actually really bad at advertising it. I mean, they have got good content, but you have to go and track it down. Mm. But, but they don't typically, I mean, a lot of the things that we do are LinkedIn hacks. They don't really teach you those things. You kind of these are kind of like trying to fast track it and that's the key thing but i mean if they did i, I guess we wouldn't be ahead of the curve on linkedin that would be the problem everybody would be doing it sure. but absolutely any any ideas for training or any suggestions or if anybody wants to do a little stunt if they think it can help people i mean there's loads of great people here john i'm sure you can help people about how to do personal branding etc be great to get some of you guys to do some um topics so um dm me sure. thank you for attending everybody I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Maureen. Bye. Bye.